Bonjour tout le monde. This is Mrs. Wakelin with your first lesson on describing emotions, which is suitable for year nine and 10. You will need a pen, some paper, and obviously your voice. So you can pause me, go and get yourself sorted, and then we can get started. So our lesson objective is to start with a simple sentence where you're describing an emotion, and then we're going to extend it by using our VCOT rule, our verb, intensifiers, connectives, opinions, and tenses. Tenses will be in lesson two. So let's have a look at the six opinions that we can use to describe our emotions. So what I want you to do is number one to six, and tell me whether you think they are positive or negative, just by writing a P or an N. I'm gonna give you about 20 seconds to get that done. Right, let's have a look and see if you've got them right. Numéro 1, content, positif. Numéro 2, triste, négatif. Numéro 3, ravi, positif. 4, fâché, négatif. 5, fatigué, négatif. Et finalement, 6, calme, positif. OK, let's hope you got those right. There's some new ones in there for you. Now, do we know what they are in English? So I'm going to give you another 20 seconds and see if you can match them up. Off you go. Let's see if you're right. So, content is happy, triste is sad, ravi, delighted, fâché, angry, fatigué, tired, and calm, calm. So they're the six emotions that we're gonna concentrate on and use to extend our sentences. Et comment ça se prononce? Our favourite bit. So, and this is the point where you need to be shouting at the screen and repeating after me. Numéro un. Content. Content. Numéro deux. Triste. Triste. I hope you're repeating these after me. Trois. Ravi. Ravi. Quatre, fâché, fâché. Remember that accent over the E at the end. Your acute accent gives you your A sound. Cinq, fatigué, fatigué. Same accent. Six, calme, calme. Okay. Obviously, We've now made these feminine. If it already has an E, we don't add one. So triste and calm don't change, but the rest of them do. However, the only one that changes with pronunciation is obviously number one. So we go from content with the silent T to contente. The rest on the right hand side are exactly the same. So it would be triste, ravi, fâché, fatigué, calm. So only content changes if you're a girl. Let's have a look at those emotions in a sentence now, just a simple one. So if I ask you the question, ça va, how are you? Your possible answers could be, je suis, I am, and then one of the answers. So je suis content or contente. If you're a girl, je suis triste, ravi, fâché, fatigué, calm, etc. This is the time when you need to shout your answer at me. So I'm going to ask you the question. You are going to reply with one of the answers. Ça va? Beautiful answers. But we might not be feeling positive. We might want to use a negative sentence. So we could say, je ne suis pas, I am not. So I'm going to ask you the question again. And you need to shout out an answer using je ne suis pas and one of the emotions. Ça va? Again. 
beautiful answers. We can put those into a sentence so we can already start extending that simple sentence. So we can say, for example, je suis contente, mais je ne suis pas fatiguée. What would the translation for that be? So, je suis contente. Yes, that's right. I am happy. Mais je ne suis pas fatiguée. Correct. But I am not tired. Right. On your paper, <coughs> can you write down an answer to the question, ça va, using both the positive and the negative and including that connective me? I'm going to give you 20 seconds to write that down. Okay, now I'm going to ask you the question again and I want you to read your answer out loud. Ça va? Oh, c'est super! Right, let's have a look again at the question, but we're going to extend it even more. So we've got that negative, so there's your example of the sentence with the ne pas. Je suis triste, mais je ne suis pas fâchée. I am sad, but I am not angry. Now we've changed it. So this time we've got je suis triste, mais je ne suis jamais fâché. Can you remember what ne and jamais mean? So the ne and pas is not. So what's the ne and the jamais? That's right. It's a never sentence. So the sentence now goes to I am sad, but I am never angry. Now we can change this sentence and make it even better by changing the connective as well. Now, on your pieces of paper, can you write down some of the connectives that you could use in this sentence that could replace me? I'm going to give you 20 seconds. Right. Now I have got the following, have you got the same as me? I've got cependant, parce que, d'autre part ou par contre, and néanmoins. All connectives that could easily replace that me in the sentence. Can you remember what these connectives mean? So, shouting at your screen, cependant, correct, however, parce que, that's right, because, D'autre part or par contre, both mean, yep, on the other hand, and néanmoins, nevertheless. Remembering that moins is the same as your less, so nevertheless. Excellent. So, same question, ça va, but we're going to look and make it even better. So, on your pieces of paper, can you write a sentence now? Similar to the one that you've written above on your piece of paper, but changing your connective. So, for example, you could put je suis content, cependant je ne suis pas fâché. Or you could even use the ne and the jamais for your never. Right, off you go. Write me a beautiful sentence on your piece of paper using je suis, a nice connective in the middle, and then a negative sentence at the end with those emotions. Okay, so I'm going to ask you the question again. You're going to read the answer out that you've written down. Ça va? Très bien. That's brilliant work so far. So we've extended our sentence from starting with je suis using a negative and a connective. And now we are going to look at developing that sentence further like our lesson objective was. So extending a simple sentence. So what have we done now? So in the red, you can see we've added an adverb in. So this simply makes that emotion even more interesting. So we've got je suis toujours contente, 
which is obviously very true. Cependant, je ne suis jamais fâché, which is obviously also true. So what am I saying about myself? Yeah, that's right. I am always happy, however, I am never angry. So let's have a look, what other words could we use in replace of toujours? So think of the words that you could put, that you know, in front of content. Start jotting them down on your paper. I'll give you some clues in English. So you could change the always to often, sometimes. Is that enough clues? Right, let's have a look at your list and match it with my list. So I've got toujours, always, souvent, often, quelquefois, sometimes, and I've also put de temps en temps, from time to time. So they would make that sentence even better. So don't rewrite your sentence, but can you now insert a nice adverb in front of your emotion to make your sentence even better? Great, so I'm going to ask you the question. I now want you to read your answer out to me. Ça va? Super. So there's one final step to our extending of our sentence. So let's have a look. So I've now written, je suis toujours très contente. Cependant, je ne suis jamais vraiment fâché. So what have I included that's new this time? That's right. We've included intensifiers, which are in the green. So by extending our sentence, we've used adverbs and we've used those intensifiers. I'm just going to give you 10 seconds to jot down any more intensifiers that you think you could use. Okay, see if you've added the ones that I've added. So I've put down très, which is very, assez, which is quite, un peu, a little, and vraiment, really. Well done if you've added more than me. So let's have a look at what the sentence now means. Je suis toujours très contente, cependant je ne suis jamais vraiment fâchée, which is all about me and obviously very true. So, I'm going to read it out. You're going to shout out the translation. Je suis toujours très contente. That's correct. I am always very happy. Cependant, je ne suis jamais vraiment fâchée. Perfect. However, I am never really angry. Right, on your pieces of paper, can you now write a lovely extended sentence similar to mine, using mine as a model, but using the new words that you want to put in yours. Off you go. Okay, I'm going to ask you the question. You're going to read your answer out to me. Ça va? Oh, c'est super et parfait. Très bien. Finally, let's have a look at how we've developed that sentence from a simple sentence to one that includes nearly all of our VCOT rule. So we've started with the simple je suis content, I am happy. The second stage that we then moved on was by adding a connective and a negative. So we went to je suis content, I am happy, mais je ne suis pas triste but I am not sad. But obviously, that's not good enough. So we're gonna develop it a little bit further and we're gonna change the connective and change the negative to make it a little bit more interesting. So we looked at je suis content, cependant, je ne suis jamais triste. I am happy, however, I am never sad. But again, not quite good enough because we can develop it further. And we did. So we added in some adverbs and intensifiers. So we got to je suis quelquefois content, 
Cependant, je ne suis jamais vraiment triste. I am sometimes happy. However, I am never really sad. And then our final sentence, we could develop it one step further. And we could do, je suis quelquefois content. Cependant, je ne suis jamais vraiment triste. Néanmoins, je suis souvent fatigué. So our final, most beautiful sentence would be, I am sometimes happy. However, I am never really sad. Nevertheless, I am often tired. Okay, so your final task for today is to recreate a sentence as good as mine at the bottom on your paper. Pause me if you need to, rewind if you need to, but let's get the sentence written. Off you go. Right, so final part of the lesson, I'm going to ask you the question. You are going to tell me your most beautiful answer that you have written on your piece of paper. Ça va? Fantastique. C'est super bien. And that is the end of the first lesson on emotions. Thank you very much for participating. I hope you've enjoyed it and learned something. Au revoir et à bientôt.